Now that I've talked about the history of Windows, I want to talk about the history of the next biggest computing based operating system, Mac OS. Now, before we start our story, we have to talk about the development of the graphical user interface and the Apple Lisa. Researchers at Xerox Park and Alan Kay created a GUI as the main interface for the small talk programming language for the Xerox Auto computer. The Apple Lisa was released on January 19, 1983, and was one of the first personal computers to have a GUI. The Lisa was a failure for Apple as it had poor sales due to its expensive 9995 price tag and had poor In the development of the Lisa in 1982, Steve Jobs was kicked from the Lisa team and migrated to the Macintosh team. Jobs redefined the goal of Macintosh from a text-based appliance computer to a cheaper Apple Lisa. So when it was released on January 24, 1984, System Software 1, it stole the spotlight. System Software 1.0 ran on the Motorola 6800 processor and received one update, 1.1, for being replaced with System Software 2.0. System Software introduced features some that still exist today, such as Finder and the Menu. It also had desktop accessories such as alarm clock, calculator, control panel, keycaps, notepad, puzzle, and scrapbook. System 1.0, 1.1, and 2.0 is the flat file system named Macintosh File System. System 2 added support for Apple Talk and the newly released LaserWrite to use it. With 2.1 and a release of Finder 5.0, it introduced the hierarchical file system. System 3.0 was introduced with the Macintosh Plus and fully implemented the HFS file system and added support for new technologies such as SCSI and Apple Share and added a trash bowl to put the file in the trash can. The system 4.0 was released with the Macintosh SE and 4.1 with the Macintosh 24. These new machines needed support for expansions the Apple Desktop Plus, internal hard drives on the Mac 2, external code displays, and the support of the 68020 processor. These first four could only run one program at a time, except for the desktop accessories. Towards the end of 1987, Apple introduced a package titled Apple Macintosh System Software Update 5.0. For the first time, the OS was offered as a retail product it included four 800K discs and three manuals at a cost of $49. System Software 5 added MultiFinder, an extension which lets the system run several programs at once by using cooperative multitasking. System 6 was a consolidation release of the OS to make it more stable and more lasting. Two major hardware introductions required support with a 68030 processor and the 1.44 megabyte super drive with the Macintosh 2X and the Macintosh SE Switch 3. Later updates also added support for functions with the Macintosh Portable. On May 13, 1991, System 7 or Mac OS 7 was released and was a major update including a user interface overhaul, new applications, improvements, new improvements, and new features. It also added support for the 68040 line of Macintosh computers. This error of Mac OS also saw the first promotion of Macintosh the escape the power of Macintosh transit, the rise of, Mac and the rise of Microsoft Windows, increased use of computer networks and the internet. A big addition was virtual memory support with 32 bit memory address. System 7.1 was mostly a bug fix, removed fonts from system files, fonts, and the system folder. Mac OS Ava was released on July 26, 1997, the same month Steve Jobs turned Apple after being removed in 1985. It was mainly released to keep Mac OS moving forward before Apple was in a spot. Mac OS 8 added features from the film project known as Copeland while leaving the underlying OS change. The GUI was changed in appearance to a new shaded grayscale look that was platinum. Back OS 8.1 updated the HFS file system and it was kept until Mac OS X Hero and it was replaced 
with Apple Forces. Mac OS 9 was the last major revision to classic Mac OS and was released on October 19, 1999. It improved support for airport wireless networking and added on an early version of multi-user support. It also improved the Sherlock search engine and Apple Script was improved as well. What would become Mac OS X originated from Next, the company Steve Jobs started after leaving Apple. Their units like Next Step was based on the mock kernel and parts of the object-oriented space code from BSD. In the 90s, Apple tried to make a next-gen operating system such as the Copeland project, but abandoned it, and instead bought Next in 1996. This allowed Next Step, then called OpenStep, to be the basis for the next generation operating system for the Macintosh line. The project's first code name was Rhapsody. Rhapsody was released at Macworld, the first demonstrated at the 1997 Worldwide Developers Conference. Rhapsody included a heavily modified OS FMK, a BSD layer, the object oriented yellow box, compatibility layer blue box for Macworld applications, and a Java virtual machine, whose visual interface was based on macOS 8's Platinum Interface. Version Finder was replaced with the Workspace Manager. Let the legacy application take full advantage of Rhapsody and to limit the amount of rewriting application code, Apple got rid of Bluebox and replaced it with the Carbon API. After this, Eric Rhapsody created Mac OS 10 Server 1.0. It was released on March 16, 1999. It was the first OS Apple released to the retail market based on the next technology. Due to the Carbon API not being the server, only applications for the Yellow Box API were present, which would eventually become part of the Cocoa API. Eventually, the technology they were using were renamed Darwin and can still be downloaded today. In September of 2000, Apple released a $30 public beta of Mac OS X, which was a successor to the server and was internally known as Kodiak. This beta introduced the Aqua user interface and added the dock and menu bar. It changed the user icons. The OS also had Darwin at its core, which is the world. It also added standard programs like text edit, preview, mail, quick time player, and terminal. A few months later, in March of 2001, the first version of Mac OS X, Mac OS Cheetah 10.0, was released. It got mixed reviews due to missing features and performance issues, but it was praised for being a good start to an operating system in its infancy. 10.0 was followed up with Mac OS 10.0 Guma. It enhanced performance and made it easier to burn CDs and DVDs, play DVDs, full printer support, fast 3D, improved Apple Script, improved file handling, Added Color Scene 4.0 and Image Capture. Although it had its improvements, some did not think it was good enough for it to become their day request. On August 23, 2002, Mac OS 10.2 Jaguar was released and was the first to be publicly marketed with Big Cat Ninja. And it killed the Happy Mac startup script and replaced it with the modern Apple logo starting. It added MPEG 4 support to QuickTime. Introduced address book and inkwell, Apple's geocomp location called Rendezvous Vaults, but it later be renamed to Bonjour, and also added Cortex Train, which used composite graphics on the video card, but to lighten the load on the CPU, caused it a boost in performance and responsiveness. Mac OS 10.3 Panther was released on October 24, 2003. Apple advertised that Panther had 150 new features, including find to get a new question interface, fast user switching, expose, text edit, and compatible Word docs, I expose developer tools, preview speed increased with PDF rendering, and quick time gains for pixel high definition video coding. New applications include Chromebook, Firewall, iChat AV, X11, and Safari, and Xbox. 
Macalester 10.4 Tiger was released on April 29, 2005. It was the last Macalester timber to run power to C processors and the first to run some 86X processors. This update has its fault by search, a new unified theme, an updated iChat AP, Safari RSS, my own VM2, added dashboard, animator, voiceover, improved map scene, added group teams, added new unit features, and updated Xcode to 2.0. Mac OS 10.4 Tiger was followed up with Mac OS 10.4 Leopard in 2007. Apple Market Leopard is having three new changes and enhancements, including a redesigned dock, adding stacks, updating Finder with colorful visual navigation from iTunes, adding support for Y64 user interface applications, the addition of Time Machine, automated back utility, and the inclusion of Front Row and Photo. Apple Miss Leopard's original release time frame, which was near the end of 2006 or early 2007, but due to developments with the iPhone, it was pushed back to October of 2007. Backlight's 10.6 Snow Leopard was released on August 28, 2009. It was mostly performed against the Lord of the Hence the name, a trait that not unlike the El Capitan has followed. Snow Leopard introduced the Mac App Store, similar to the iOS App Store, Bootcamp, the piece of software that allows you to find Microsoft Windows and Mac competitions, Finder is written with Coco. Improved to iChat and the plan to update and keep the support of the application and support of the release. Mac OS 10.7 Line was released on July 20, 2011 via the Mac App Store for Mac set to Mac Use this for anyone who didn't have Snow Leopard and they had Tiger and Leopard, they would have to upgrade to Snow Leopard first, then they would have to upgrade to Rock. The problem was fixed for a limited time and the installed download. USB flashback New features include address book getting an iPad like user interface, airdrop with release, new app push notifications, auto correction apps like OS, auto save was added, support for emojis was added, FaceTime can follow the OS, find a got some improvements, bump up service release, add cloud up to the user interface, add chat got support. Well, when we're just like one more thing, we have a pad and application. We'll use a single pad. They're like the way out. What else? We'll add it. We'll find iPad like user interface and multi touch gestures. We're added for the magic mouse and trackpad. Mac OS 10.9 Mavericks was released on October 22nd, 2017. It was the first release, not to be named for a big camp, as Apple decided to name Mac OS other places in California. Mavericks added some new changes and features, such as a less skilled more of a design, getting support for OpenGL 1 and OpenGL 2, iBooks was added, Maps was added, the calendar app had its enhancement, and Safari had a significant JavaScript enhancement. Mac OS 10.10 Yosemite was released on October 16, 2014. It is probably the biggest change to Mac OS 10 in a graphical user interface since, since the release of Jet as it changed the user interface to look more like iOS 7. Other than that, there wasn't many major changes besides that caught in the V for the other Apple services, adding handoff which allowed the user to integrate, to integrate their Mac or iOS 8 devices via Bluetooth, LE, or Wi-Fi, and photos replacing iPhoto and Apple. The next release in Mac OS 10.11 of Capitan Named draft for a rock formation at Yosemite signified it was a refined version of the previous version and was released in September of 2015. It added features to improve security, performance, design, and usability. On September 20, 2016, Mac OS 10.12 Sierra was released. It was named after the Sierra Nevada mountain range in California and Nevada. Sierra added Siri to Mac OS, something that was on iOS for a while now. It also built upon continuity via Universal Clipboard and Apple File System or APFS was released. 2017 saw the release of MacOS 10.13 High Sierra, named after the High Sierra region in California. APFS replaced HFS for the default file system. It supports 64 inode numbers and is designed for flash memory. 
Model 2 was released with the Earth OS, and photos in Safari, got a few updates including a sidebar and new editing features for photos, and a new intelligence tracking prevention for Safari. macOS 10.14 Mojave was released last year, and is currently the newest version of macOS, unless you include the betas for Catalina. Some of the changes with the appreciation of OpenGL and OpenCL, as they won't be supported in Catalina, as Apple encourages developers to use Mac 2, and this is the last version of macOS to support 32-bit applications, and some iOS apps reported over to Mojave, and the big thing people were excited for was dark mode. So that is the history of macOS from System Software 1 to macOS 10.14. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and look forward for more tech videos. This is KTSP signing off.